Can you believe it? It's finally here. It's the most wonderful time of the year, unless you get stressed out about how to pay for it. Savewithconrad.com can help you make this the best Christmas ever. You won't make a house payment for the next two months. That's right. Skip your next two house payments and use all that cash for your extra holiday expenses. And come next year, you're going to have a lower monthly payment. Don't put Christmas on a credit card. Pay your credit card debt off at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Savewithconrad.com. Hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When with the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Happy holidays to you, Conrad. Happy holidays to you, Mr. Schiavonto. I'm I'm doing fine. I hope you're doing well. Better than I deserve. Excited to be here with you. Mm-hmm. As you and I are recording, we are mere moments away from learning who is going to be in the college football playoff. Had we if we thought through this a little more, we would have waited until after it was over. So you could ridicule me, make fun of me, talk shit, et cetera, et cetera. Well, yeah, there, there's a good chance that uh, Alabama is going to make it. Well, listen, I appreciate you being the ever, ever the optimist, but eh, I think there's an anti-Alabama bias. Although really it would be uh, some big time ratings. I think there if you go. Being, if it wound up being uh, Michigan. Versus Ohio State and Georgia versus Alabama. There you go. That's what Big they're going to do. Ratings, lots of controversy. Could be fun, but I don't think they'll do that. They always go for the TV ratings. They go for oh, the money should. first. Yes, they the, should. The biggest whores in sports are in college athletics. They go for it first. So well, they there's some whores in the pros, too. Yeah, but not the biggest. Who's they, the biggest whore in wrestling, Tony? The biggest whore in wrestling? Yeah, is it Doc Gallows? That's pretty good. I mean, he listen, was- he, he, he is unabashed. I mean, he's all about the doll hairs, brother. I mean, it's, it's in a fun, loving way. I say this, of course, but did, did you have some other whore pop to mind? Well, I guess I could be considered. <clears throat> oh, well, you're well known, well established, especially here on this program. I mean, we used to sell, uh, like I think, I think Silva calls them pocket peas. I won't say the P word. It's awful early in the morning. But you know, sometimes when you're, uh, well, if you're Dave Silva, every now and again, your wife decides, no, no, no moss. And you have to, uh, <clears throat> take matters in your own hands. Well, we used to have a sponsor, as you recall here on the program that sold those sort of apparatuses. Oh yes. Those things. Right. And so he would just walk a, walk a, walk Anyway, today, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, Lex Luger getting kicked out of the horseman. Now you may recall last week here on the program, we saw an interview where Lex Luger talked about the fallout from Starcade and talked about how everyone pulled their weight. And he talked about Ric Flair recapturing the world title. And he talked about Arn and Tully retaining against the road warriors. And then he sort of glossed over the fact that he lost the United States championship to dusty roads. Mm-hmm. But he basically says, I'm not standing in the shadows anymore. I'm going to be my own man. As you saw boy, JJ Dillon, not really liking that language one bit, right? It all comes to a head of that same TV taping. And that's what we're going to be seeing clips of today. This should be a fun show, man. It's uh, a big part of, uh, Jim Crockett promotions history. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, seeing exactly how they play this one out because there was no doubt that the horsemen were the biggest faction in, in, uh, the NWA back then, uh, right. the, biggest, the biggest stars in, uh, in Jim Crockett promotion. Yeah. Dusty on one side and Nikita on the one side, but really the whole promotion was based on the horsemen. And, uh, you know, I, I get to thinking about that. And I, and I think back when they all said that Dusty had the big ego and Dusty always put himself over. And we talked about how. Last week, we talked about how Lex Luger should have won the bunkhouse stampede and didn't, and that was a mistake. But the fact was that Dusty helped through his booking, and obviously the talent of Flair and Tully and Arn and and even Ole back then and Barry Windham, uh, especially Tully, Flair, and Arn, because they were the constants. Yeah. Uh, They were the biggest stars that we had 
and thanks to their abilities and Dusty's booking, that's the way it was. So this is cool. This would be good to, good to see this. I don't know why. I don't know why Dusty made, made that change. When I think about yeah. it, with Lex Luger, you mean? Yeah. Well, maybe he thought he needed. You know, let's remind everybody we're we're still trying to find a replacement for Magnum TA. Right. And I'm not saying Lex is going to be it, but I am saying this is around the same time that you guys are going to purchase the UWF and you start to see sting having enhancement matches. He's no longer a part of a trio that we had seen him with a lot of times on the Watts presentation. Mm-hmm. So maybe we're, we're thinking, all right, with, with Magnum down and, and we tried the, the baby face and the key to thing, maybe we need some more on the good guy column. Yeah. And, and so maybe that's the reason that we see more Lex and, and sting here do you think those were dusty calls or flair calls i always think it was dusty calls i mean i know flair had an input but dusty had the final word well i mean it's been said that 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 flair made them both so you don't think flair could have asked dusty for them yeah he could have let me work with that guy sort of thing yeah he could have i mean we all thought at the time and i guess we can get into it once we start uh rolling tape but we thought at the time that he was put in this position to become the man, you know. Yeah. When when the bunk bunkhouse tapped, but that was not it. So it was not it. This is going to be fun though. If you haven't already, pull up World Championship Wrestling on your Peacock machine. We want you to go to season three, episode forty nine. This would have been December twelfth, nineteen eighty seven. Mm. That's season three, episode forty nine, December twelfth, nineteen eighty seven. 35 years ago, you old sum of a bitch. Wow. 35. Wow. Think about this. If you had a baby that day, mm-hmm. you could have grown up, got married, had kids, got divorced, mm-hmm. got remarried, had a new set of kids, got divorced, mm-hmm. got remarried. I mean, it could be, mm-hmm. I mean, your, your baby right here that was born on the day this episode aired, it could be Ric Flair right now. <laughs> well, on uh, November uh, 21st of that same year. Now, wait a minute. On October 17th of that, don't, don't know the date. And arcade, how about that? October 17th of that year, uh, Lois and Tony had twins. Man. We had, we had little baby twins. Ain't that, I, I mean, mm-hmm. look what God did for you. Yeah, look what God you did. Know, you don't cut your hair. I cut my hair. I freaking cut my hair last week. I cut it. I know. I motherfucked you here on the program because I had a whole big plan. We were going to do a hair intervention and you took, you don't let me have any fun anymore. You hair don't t- hair intervention. Yeah. Like a hair intervention. Squishing on, together. Hair intervention. I got hair in my ear. It's itching. Sorry. Wait a minute. You, you got, you let somebody cut your hair and you didn't have them clean your ears up. No, they do. But still my, my, my ears itch all the time, all the time. Oh, that's cause you're a nasty motherfucker. You know, you're allowed to use Q-tips and clean out the inside. What's I, last I, time you I, peroxide down there? Peroxide. Yeah. You was last time you put peroxide in your ear. I've, I've never put peroxide in my ear. Oh, you want to feel a fun sensation. <laughs> It'll be like when you get a text from Brit and rebel back to back, you know, that tingle you feel on the inside. You can recreate that here with a little yeah. peroxide in the ear. Yeah. It'll bubble Jones. You don't like bubble Jones. Yeah, I don't like bubble Jones. Has likes bubble Jones. Oh, I'm sure he does. All right, let's do it. <laughs> we want to go to season three, episode 49. It was uh, December 12th, 1987. And let's all pray for Tony to continue to get regular haircuts and clean out his fucking ears. Thank you. And I think we have a, a special countdown right now, T. We got a brand new one in. It comes from uh, DJ Turnup. Now, he's a cool guy. He's one of our favorites. And uh, but I haven't uh, listened to this, so who knows what it is about? Usually, I listen to him beforehand. Uh oh! I just loaded it up and said, "Let's go." You ready? Boy, the the <laughs> links we go to for our listeners here. I mean, I'm talking about not just nominal effort. No effort. Here we go. Well, uh, Megan Nelson sent one in too, but she'll have to go to next week because DJ sent his in first. So there it is. And by the way, if you're a low key big hog, 
uh, even if you're a glass bottom boat rider, we'd love for you to send us in an intro. We'd love that at hello slapdicks at gmail.com. That's hello slapdicks plural at gmail.com. Everybody go. remember the dicks are always plural with Tony Schiavone. That's hello slap dicks. <laughs> They'll be coming around here with a singular dick. You bring plural dicks when you want to fuck with Schiavone. It's yeah. hello slap dicks. And you can either pretty, uh, have it uh, produced like uh, DJ Turnup is going to, I'm sure, here in a minute, or you can just do it into your phone and send it to us. It's very easy. Oh, baby, we like it raw. Oh, baby, we like it raw. Can we do this? Here we go, DJ. DJ, turn on the queen. By the way, speaking of gimmicks, we have a, a fun gimmick here on the show called mm. Tony Reed's Rap. Oh, Lord have mercy. Tony Reed's Rap. Oh, no. It got over, Tony. No, I'm not going to do that again. No, you are. I was hoping we were getting Tony Reed's rap back. Hi, everybody. This is Tony Schiavone. For weeks now, we've been trying to talk with the four horsemen to find out about possibly bad blood between this group, this unit that obviously is the stalwart the top unit in this sport today the four horsemen and right here the limousine is pulled into the arena right now getting out of the car first of all james j dillon the nature boy rick flair and we're going to be able to talk to them in just a second let them get their bags out of their car and see if we can't talk to them james j dillon there's been rumors about bad blood between the four horsemen can you explain this Shivani, there is no problem with the four horsemen and frankly i'm tired of being asked the question there is no problem with the four horsemen i have no other comment to make Okay, that's from James J. Dillon. Here's Ric Flair, the world heavyweight champion. Champ, what about bad blood within the four horsemen? We've heard a lot about you it. You know, I've heard this time and time again, Shivani. There's no problem with the four horsemen. I'm the team spokesman, and I've given it to you straight off the cuff. No problem. We're the greatest wrestling unit in this business. A lot of jealousy prevails around us, but there's no problem in the unit. Got it? Okay, that from the four horsemen, and of course, the world champion, Ric Flair. I like that, man. It's a fun little way to set it up. We never saw it, so it feels new. It feels fresh. It doesn't feel rehashed. I dig it. You know what? I, I vividly remember that. Really? Yeah. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, I remember us. Oh, here's JR with us. Got to go to here. It. This is the debut of JR in yeah. the studio. David Crockett, Jim Ross is with us now. Also, Tony, what about that? There is dissension in there. Isn't that right, guys? Exactly right. right. Uh, some, I think there's some big problems as far as the four horsemen are concerned, Tony. You know, Jim, David, we're going to take a look today at a few incidents concerning the four horsemen. And, and regardless of what they like to, I guess, deny, something is going on, and it's really serious. You know, each and every week out here, we probably talk to the four horsemen more than anybody oh, yeah. as a group. There's no doubt about it. So when there's something up, obviously, Jim Crockett Promotion is going to send me back in the background to find out what's going on. James J. Dillon denied it. Rick Flair denied it, but obviously something is up, and we're going to take a look at it right here today. We, we knew for weeks that something had been eating at Arn Anderson during these interviews. Seeing is believing. Exactly right, and we're going to have all the involved parties here today. I think we'll get to the bottom of this thing. Okay, a great show here today. Let's start it off by going to the ring. So there you see the, uh, the debut here mm -hmm. of uh, Jim Ross in the studio. We heard Jim Ross on the call last week. I want to sort of catch everybody up about whatever else is going on here in the promotion. You know that there might be some potential dissension with the horsemen. That's going to be the, the chief topic. Flair's the world champ now, having won it back from Ronnie Garvin. He's recently mm -hmm. been called out by Sting. Yeah. Dusty Rhodes is the U.S. champ, having just beat Lex Luger. Arn and Tully are the tag champs. Nikita has the TV strap. The next pay-per-view is the Bunkhouse Stampede. Mm -hmm. And... On this day, the WWF ran a doubleheader in Kansas City, headlined by DiBiase, Hogan, and Andre. They also ran a show that night at the Boston Garden with uh, Randy Savage and Honky Tonk Man on top. Wow. And uh, just a little uh, trivia note for you. 
You want to guess what the number one song in the country was? Do you want to guess? In 1987? Yes. Don't stop believing. Well, that is incorrect. Okay. Uh, but you know, listen, it was a good try. Okay. Let me say that it's one of our mutual friends, perhaps absolute favorite artist, a referee who is obsessed with one artist in particular. Is it a Springsteen song? No. Oh, thank God. Is it ringing the bell yet? This is the start of the song. Jesus. Nope. I'm a big fan of his though, especially this time of year. Oh, Elvis. Uh, incorrect. Here it comes. You ready, Tony? This doesn't ring a bell at all. No. As soon as you hear it, as soon as the beat hits, you're going to be disappointed. It sounds like my funeral. Silva does it. You don't know it yet? Well, I guess it nice. Prince. by George Michael. Jesus. George God. Michael. Okay. God, you're really bad at this. I wasn't a George yeah. Michaels fan. No, I know. But as you know, Charles Robinson is obsessed with him. Charles Robinson has a George Michael phone case. What? Yeah. George Michael is, I think everybody thinks of. You know, Charles Robinson is being obsessed with Ric Flair. No, he's obsessed with George Michael. He's really? little Nate because we didn't know that he was that obsessed with George Michael. He's really little George. Okay. I just thought I, who knows? You thought what? I just thought all the girls were obsessed with George Michael. I didn't think the guys were, I didn't think. You realize George Michael was homosexual. I know that. Well, then why would the girls be obsessed with him? Well, they were obsessed with him before, even because they thought, thought he was beautiful and gorgeous. Well, oh, you yeah. know that. He's a damn handsome man. Yes. I don't think it came out till later to that he was homosexual. Oh. Well, listen, you said you remembered that uh, backstage skit. Yeah. So there are two, I, things. I, two things. I remember setting it up and standing there and they we were going through how the, the door would come up and the, the limousine would come in. And I remember if you go back and listen to that, I was, I really thought it was a bad take. I was looking for words and I came up with stalwart. Yeah. Uh, which I thought, eh. And then I paused. I just, I remember just thinking that, man, I flubbed that, but they aired it anyway. So by the way, uh, for those of you who were born, uh, in the Dave Silva homeschool system, stalwart means loyal, reliable, and hardworking. I guess it kind of worked. It does work. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think it did. I just, I mean, it was like, I'm looking for a word. And I said that word thinking, God damn, I've never used that word before. <laughs> but you knew what it meant. To um, you. Yeah, apparently I did, but I've never used it before. And I've never used it until right now again. Hey, this is a pretty, uh, we got the lightning express here. Rest like yeah. Cougar J and Gary Royal. Right. Lightning Express is Tim Horner and Brad Armstrong. They've been right. recently put together here on the program. Right. They're giving them a decent amount of time here. Yeah, they're putting some time into it. They are. Uh, they wanted to get these kids over as a top tag team. And uh, they just kind of went so far, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Again, got to be able to do a promo to really, really get over. And that's why Flair and the Flair and the Horsemen were over, not because of what I mean. They were obviously we know how great they were in the ring, but they were over because of that that studio talk that they did when they came and talked to me and David. That's how they got over. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, are your pubes curly? My my what? Your pubes. I don't check them out on a daily basis. Do you? Last time you ran your fingers through them, did it feel like they had a kink in them or no? Uh. Do you want me to do it right here, right now? And if you would, it'd be helpful. I'm not going to do it, but, uh, no, I would offer say, it and then not, I'm going to say, because I knew you would say yes. And I knew I wouldn't do it. Um, uh, I'm going to say, yes, they are. Here's what I'm getting at. We're going to, when they go to commercial, we're going to go to commercial. And I want you to look at the hairstyles on Tim Horner and Brad Armstrong. And I want you to figure out if you were going to fashion your, uh, your Tarzan cover up. Yeah. After okay. one of these hairstyles, 
would you want a Tim Horner special down there yeah. or would you want the why would Brad Armstrong that was the silliest tag in tag out I've ever seen. Yeah, they they fucked that up completely. I do like that little finish though. That's got to be it. Cougar J goes down. Gary Royal on the outside by the way was the guy in the mask as a gladiator who lost to the Mulkies in our studio earlier. I think they're going to be heading to a commercial and when they do, we shall as well, but I don't know about the timing of that one. I don't know if I would have showed that as a replay, but I definitely yeah. would have shown that little leg drop finish as a replay. Mm-hmm. So they're going to keep it in here. This is all we needed the replay of right here. Right. Well, we, we did things on the fly back then. Man, he sold it like a million bucks too. Good mm-hmm. for him. Goodness gracious. Let's take a listen. Let's talk about it. Come yeah, on. let's talk about what's going on because we talked to James J. Dillon, nothing there. We talked to Ric Flair, nothing there. Once again, I had a chance to talk to some of the people involved. And I got a chance to interview Lex Luger right after Starcade. It was a classic match. Lex Luger, Dusty Rhodes for the U.S. Heavyweight title. There was no doubt about it. It was a, it was a great match. We all, we all knew that Dusty Rhodes was a legend. I think that Lex Luger really proved himself on that day uh, that he is really a supreme athlete and a, super, a coming superstar if he's not already there. All right, so let, let's listen to the interview. Right. It was a shocking interview to me, and I think it will be to you, the fans. Uh-oh. It's a total package, Lex Luger. You know, Tony Schiavone... I like to say right off the top in Starcade 87 was everything that it was billed to be. It was the first of many to come for the total package Lex Luger, but the level of intensity, the level of competition is something that I've never seen before. And I've been involved in professional football playoff games and it was there. The air was like electricity. I have never felt or seen anything like it before. And it was a pleasure to be involved. And you know, when I got in that ring, and Dusty Rhodes and I, we locked eyes. We both knew that the past, the present, and the future of professional wrestling was right there in that ring. Because you see, Dusty Rhodes, my hat's off to you. You wrestled a hell of a match. You show me that you are what they say you are. But you see, Dusty Rhodes, so is the total package Lex Luger. Because there's only a few superstars in our sport. You can count them on one hand. There's that special few that rise head and shoulders above the best. You're one, Ric Flair's another, but you see, so is a total package Lex Luger. Because when I walk through an airport, people stop what they're doing. When I walk down that aisle in filled arenas, when I take off that robe, people know that they're looking at a special athlete. Something only comes along once in a decade or two. Because you see, in that arena that night, in Star Kid 87, when we looked into each other's eyes, I knew Dusty Rhodes that the game plan set forth was all wrong. Excuse me. I, I don't think I understood you right. Shivani, this interview is over. Luger, you and I need to talk. James, we've been personal friends for a long time. We're a business associate, but this interview is over when I say it's over. Mm. What I'm saying is from now on, you're welcome to accompany me to the ring at any time. But the bottom line is I will win and lose matches from now on on my own merits as an athlete and as a competitor. You will, there will be no more outside interference. And they're taking a commercial and I think we should too. We're going to talk about it on the other side. I'm going to hit a big stop here when we get to 1158 and there it is. And of course we're taking a timeout right now to talk about Tony's dick hair. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants. Woo! That was a horse. <laughs> Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift. Also a horse. And give the men in your life the opportunity to go from eggnog to nice hog this December. Oh, By going to manscaped.com and using the promo code WHW for 20% off plus, plus free shipping. Manscaped is a one-stop shop for all of your holiday needs. They got the perfect gift of the Platinum Package 4.0 plus lots of little presents. Perfect for those stocking stuffers. Man, this is uh, giving the gift of good hygiene and a few laughs. Everybody smiles when they see Manscaped on the box. Check out some of their new liquid formulations. Shampoos, body washers, upstairs and downstairs deodorant. That's right. Downstairs deodorant. Got Tony Schiavone hired at AEW. 
print that, that. Gels, exfoliants, absolutely everything you can need to keep it clean, Janine. Don't let their chestnuts roast in the wrong boxers. Get them a pair of Manscaped boxers. You're gonna keep that area cool. You don't want swamp ass, do you? Of course not. You don't want your friends to have it either. Now that you've gifted these rascals perfect privates, how about the full body line from Manscaped? They do a lot more than just your groin, daddy. Nasty nose hairs, no problem for the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. You got some Wolverine gimmicks? Not a problem anymore with Shears 2.0. They got scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file. What about the preserved cologne? You want to smell like you've been fucking around in the woods when you're really just a nerd sitting at your desk all day, get your wife all ramped up? Well, no problem. How about a light, breezy, woodsy feel? It'll give you that tree scent even when Christmas is over. Maybe she'll let you do third input under the tree. I don't know. Jesus' birthday. Let her know. Still using a loofah? Let me recommend the body buffer. You know that dirty-ass loofah your wife bought for? He's actually filled with bacteria and dead skin. Get rid of that old turd. Get that body scrubber that feels smoother but acts tougher. How about the crown jewel for your family jewels? I do declare the lawnmower 4.0. It's a skin safe technology. It's a life changer. It's going to help you reduce the nicks and cuts on Santa and his big old glorious sack. Manscaped is here to make holiday shopping a blast by giving products they'll love and make them laugh. And Tony, it ain't no laughing matter about this special offer. Well, I'm laughing right now <laughs> because they got scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file. <laughs> I don't know why that popped me. <clears throat> Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WHW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code WHW. Manscaped is the perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Keep that music going, Silva. Put us back on the camera here because we're going to do our best Dusty Roads for a Manscaped promo here, Tony. You ready for this? Ready. Let's put hard times on your overgrown dick hairs. And if your dick hair looks like Brad Armstrong from the back, put your hand against my hand. Because we're the heartbeat of smooth dick hair this holiday season at manscaped.com with the promo code WHW. Let's put hard times on your dick hair, son. Absolutely. And remember... If your nuts clubbering, they get sweaty and stinky. Go get them. 20% off. Take a look at that dirty old razor. <laughs> and say, a computer took your job, daddy. <laughs> a computer from manscaped.com. The weed whacker. The lawnmower. Put your hand against my hand. Well, let's get rid of my brand on so dick hair. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to give you a watch and kick your ass out the door and put that watch around your nuts. <laughs> At manscaped.com <laughs> with the promo code WHW. Hey, we're having a lot of fun on this show. And if you want to laugh like this on the holiday season, gift Manscaped. They're going to laugh. You're going to laugh. They're going to get a great product. And we hope you guys. Support a great sponsor, manscaped.com. The promo code is WHW. WHW. Easy for me to say. Tony, I'm at 1158. Yeah. Are you at 1158? Yes. Uh, I use their products every day, and that's a shoot. Legitimately, uh, I just got out of the shower. That body wash, that body scrubber, it's legit. I just used it. Roll Tide Daddy. Here we go. 1158 in three, two, one, play. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Barry Wyndham. Western States Heritage Champion against Print Knight. Hey, guys, what about this young man? So, Barry Windham, Western States Champion. Yeah. What would you think of that uh, promo that we just saw from Lex Luger? It's pretty big-time stuff there, was it not? Yeah, <clears throat> it was. I mean, he basically turned babyface right in front of us there. Yes, he did. When he was talking about how great it was to wrestle – a guy like Dusty Rhodes and, um, yeah, so that, that he did. And you know, no more outside interference. Right. Right. Also, I mean, that was a big statement. Also, I, I noticed that when we came back, David Crockett was on commentary. Eventually David would be moved to do the interviews only. 
and David and I, and Jr. and I did the commentary, and David did the interviews, which David didn't really care for, obviously. It kind he of wanted to be, he wanted to do the commentary with you. Well, I mean, look, look, and and I didn't mind. I don't, I never cared, and I really like working with Jr. Um, but David and I were the team that started all this, right? Right, right. So th there was kind of like a thought, and I think David thought this, although he never did vocalize it. But you could tell. Uh, David thought that basically bringing in JR broke up the team. What well, if? It did. But there you go. But David was still, you know, doing the interviews. I don't know when that happened, but it's going to happen during, I guess, during 88 or something, you know, eventually. What was, I mean, was it fair to say that in this era, uh, Jim, David's brother was really running the show. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and there was, there were many, most of them, the horsemen that felt that dusty was running the show. Right. That felt that anything that dusty wanted to do anything at all, uh, Jim Crockett agreed with Jim mm. Crockett moved to Dallas, moved from Charlotte to Dallas with Dusty. Now, I don't know if he was convinced by Dusty or if he wanted to get away from his family. My Did understanding you... is he was drinking too much at the time. Okay. He had, uh, uh some marital circumstances okay. and he maybe wanted to get out of Charlotte. Okay. Uh, you did an interview with him obviously right before he passed away. Yes. Uh, did he talk about that? He did. Okay. That's all over in our uh, interview conversations with Conrad at adfreeshows.com. It's worth a listen. It really is. It is worth a listen. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And by the way, if you're listening to this, uh, live on Wednesday, uh, last night we had Kevin Nash break down Starcade 1998. We did a little watch along where folks over at ad free shows got to ask him questions. This is the man who was not only the man to beat the streak from Goldberg and finally become the world heavyweight champion for WCW. But in addition to that, he was also the booker. So lots discussed last night on the program. If you're getting this early on Monday, it's your reminder to, uh, to join us. Yeah. And as we're talking right there, the uh, job guy for Barry fucked up a spot big time. He's getting a couple of European uppercuts for yes. his trouble. Yes, he is. Absolutely. I think it's fair. If you fuck up a spot, we hit you in the head a couple mm -hmm. times. Yeah. I think everybody's kind of familiar with that. And here we go. You know, I know that that has a guy flying and two guys taking big bumps, but I've always thought that clothesline finish looked kind of fucking lame. Mm. It doesn't look like it hurts at all. It doesn't yeah. look like a clothesline at all. Yeah, I know. The ones they give today uh, are pretty legit, but this one is going to go across the chest, so we're going to see the replay here. And the guy knew it was coming. The hell, that hit him in the titties. Well... They do I don't work. know what to say about titty shots. Okay. Wow. The Western States here it is, champion. Barry, the fans love you. You know, I tell you what, I love a match like that. I tell you, he's a competitor. But wow. there are a few yeah. people around here that aren't competitors. People around here that want to walk away with something that's not theirs. This man, Larry Zabisco, wants me to give him the Western States Championship. Mr. Zabisco, not a chance. All right, Barry, let's show the fans exactly what Mr. Zabisco is trying to do to you. All right, yeah, that's exactly we roll right. the tape. We'll show you right now, okay? Uh, I guess they got it. So here's the footage of Baby Doll coming in the ring, putting her hands over your eyes or, or Barry's eyes. Yeah. I guess we're simulating a scratch. Now she's back with some sort of. There's a god damn Ricky Harris Black Bart. And there it is. Larry Zabisco oh, slides okay. in. We're going to have a little bit of a feud for the Western States heritage championship. What a make believe piece of shit title that is. Yeah. Well, that was one of those where, you know, we wanted to expand out West, right? It's a good angle though. Yeah. I'll give well, you that. I like the I, angle. The, the thought was though, that, you know, we're going to be running more out West and it'll be a belt that we defend in the Western part of the country. 
Right, we're going to be back. You're going to be back with him. He wants you besides winning that championship. You know that piece of videotape right there tells a story. It shows something. You know, it makes you wonder who recruited who. Did Baby Doll recruit Larry Zabisco or did Larry Zabisco recruit her to do his dirty work? When you send a woman to do a man's job, oh. you better make sure she can do it right. She tried to claw my eyes out, and you're the one that's going to have to pay Zabisco. Baby Doll, as far as you're concerned, if you ever stick your nose in my business again, I'm not responsible for what happens to you. Uh. Now, Mr. Zabisco, you step in the ring with me. If you think you can walk away with a championship, come right on ahead. Because everybody out here knows that you don't have a chance of ever winning this Western States Heritage Championship without anybody's help. You have to have somebody in your corner at all times. You know, there's just one thing else I'd like to say on a serious note. Lex Luger, very close to me at one time, uh -oh. but he made the bed that he's lying in. You made it, Lex. And what you did is you made the biggest mistake of your life a long time ago by wanting to be one of the horsemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back with more action right after this. How about that shit right there, dude? That was yeah. fun. Old school stuff when you have everybody talk about the angle. Man, and it makes it feel special. It makes That's it right. feel big. It's That's a right. thread throughout the show. Right. And coming up next, we got Michael P.S. Hayes tagging with Gorgeous Jimmy with Precious here. Mm -hmm. Taking on David Osley and John Savage. Yeah. Check them out, man. Wow, wow. How do you not? My dad walks around the kitchen like that to this day. <laughs> I swear, my dad walks around the kitchen like that every day. When my mom was up cooking breakfast, yeah. he's doing that. And then when I come over to eat breakfast, he hits me with names as soon as I walk in. <laughs> it's like it's it's a rooster strut, is what it is. I love it so much, dude. Yeah. Michael Hayes is perhaps uh, one of the biggest knuckleheads we've ever been around in our lives. No doubt, yeah. but I think because he dresses silly and has outrageous behavior that he is oftentimes forgot as one of the greatest minds in the history of wrestling. Oh shit. Mike, Michael knew what he was doing. Yeah. I'm just saying it feels like, Hey man, he kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. There was a time when, when Eric took over the company and Michael started doing, Michael and I were doing the main event at one time. I don't know if you remember that. We did the on-camera leads yeah. for the main event. And Eric was so dead set against us being a quote-unquote Southern promotion. You know, he just wanted us to be more of a national promotion. I, right. almost, I almost equate it to what NASCAR has done. They don't want to be a Southern, seem to be a... But that's what they are. And so they went national. We tried to go national. Eric tried everything Southern Eric wanted to get rid of. It was one of the reasons that Eric didn't like JR's commentary. He thought JR was too Southern. In reality, when you think back about it, about it, that had no validity at all. If you're a good announcer, you're a good announcer, regardless. I mean, for instance, uh, some of the greatest baseball announcers – in the world had a Southern twang to them. Right. And that's just the way it was. So anyway, one of the things that he didn't like was the free birds. They thought they were Southern. I mean, you go back and you think about how they used to have the, the Confederate flag on their back and everything. And it was a sure. Southern thing. And, and I remember he saying one time, he said, man, I've, I'm just, just Michael in that free bird thing. And, the, and I remember Michael looking at me and Michael saying one time, he said, I can be anything he wants me to be. Yes. You know, I, I can, I can turn off this free bird thing. Hell I'm from Philadelphia. Right. <laughs> 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 that is Michael Hayes in a sentence. Exactly. Hey, you tell me what you want and I'll do that. But if you ain't got no suggestions, I'm just going to be a free bird. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I, and that stuck with me for a long time. And I'm thinking, you know, Michael's pretty, Michael knows what the fuck he's doing. Uh, yeah. So it was, uh, I, I just remember that conflict that they had where 
Eric was tired of the free bird shit, but Michael was saying, okay, come up with something else. I'll do it. Cause I'm from Philadelphia. Yeah. So. He, uh, one of the, by the way, just recently had, and, and I know you you've admitted here on the program, you're what you would call not a good friend, but he just had shoulder surgery a few days ago. If you want to reach out to him and who's that? You should well, Michael Hayes. I I'll reach out to it. Well, no, I'm, I won't reach out to him. Oh yeah. I forgot. You got a rule now. Yeah. But that, we won't, that we won't talk about. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it's a solid rule. I'm not poking fun in the rule. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, we used to, me and you used to fuck around with Michael Hayes and yeah. now yeah. you have to make different decisions. Well, right? you know what? I got John Smoltz to sign a freaking baseball for I mean, what happened? Denzel freaking ate it. His dog ate it, but man, yeah. you can't be, wait, you're mad at him that he treats his dog. Well, no, I'm mad at him that he left the freaking baseball around where a dog would chew it up. He ain't never had nothing nice. I've been to his house. He's got some nice shit in there, but Denzel ate all that too. Is the <laughs> point that dog runs the damn show. He's got his own recliner. As you saw, uh, yeah. think about that. Michael Hayes is such a dog lover. He got his dog a recliner. I'm not even making that up. Oh, that kid put his hands up. Michael's pissed now. By the way, uh, this pairing of the free birds, Garvin and Hayes, yeah. they've only been doing this for Crockett since September. Right. They started at September 20th at the Omni. Cause why not with this music and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's really the first time we saw just these two guys as the free birds on mid Atlantic TV. Yeah. Now they had been, of course, doing it since like 83, starting back in world class and then did it together in the AWA, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you'd have to go back to late September before you see it be part of the presentation here. So if you've been watching and you just remember Garvin as a singles act, that explains kind of how it all came together. Well, I'm sure we're going to an interview here, but I have a question about that. This is the spam slam of the oh, week. Oh my God. Okay. Spam slam. By Hormel makers of spam and other grocery products. And there they go. The rock and roll express. Maybe we've seen them team together for the very last time a couple of weeks ago. Now mm, uh, fans remember they were on that, uh, Dorton arena show with Ricky, the dragon steamboat. And, yeah. and they said at the beginning of the year, this was their last year as a tag team together. So yeah. if that was it, congratulations to them. Thanks for the memories. And here's a couple of free birds right now. Nabes. Michael Hayes and gorgeous Jimmy Garvin precious. How you doing, David? I gotta tell you something. Well, all three of us are real excited. I mean, we're right in the middle of a bunch of bunkhouse stampedes from coast to coast. And not only that, huh, let me tell you something. It's not my fault that the four horsemen are having problems. I know I haven't said that in a long time, but I've had a lot of things on my mind. But it's starting to come down to earth now with Michael P.S. Hayes and my squeeze beside me. And we're getting excited about something else, too. We're getting excited about the World Tag Team titles. Because let me tell you something. I'm not going to take nothing away from the guy that's always in a bad mood, Tully Blanchard. Are you and in a bad mood, too, if you had a face like that to walk around with? <laughs> I guess so. With a face like that, I'd be a little bit mad myself. And Arn Anderson, because they are great athletes. They are the World Tag Team Champions, even though they cheat. It's like going to Africa for the big game. There ain't no use going to Africa and hunting some rabbit with big long ears. We might as well go for the big stuff. And the big stuff is Arn Anderson and the guy that's always in a bad mood, Tully Blanchard. We're coming after you, and we're going to take your titles. Go with it, Michael. Well, you know what a wicked web we weave. When first we try to deceive, and they tell the people there is no deception. But you see, there is deception in the four horsemen, and it is at that time, the prime time, when they are most vulnerable, because we got matches lined up, and it is right for the picking. It is time for the fall, and I guarantee you and promise you very soon, Michael P.S. Hayes, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, world tag team champions, because baby, we got what it takes to take what you got, like four peas in a pot, and the peas will be jumping at the water wasn't hot. All right, let's go to the ring. I was in the ring. We got what it takes to take what you got. Man, that. Write that down. Something else because the water ain't hot. You know what? We got what it takes to take what you got is a new shirt. 
available now over at loisrules.com. Uh, he was rapping before yeah. rapping was cool. Dude, it was cool, man. Yeah. Hey, so here's my question because as great as gorgeous Jimmy Garvin was, loved him, yeah. loved Precious, where were Gordy and uh, Buddy Roberts at this time? Well, let's uh, let's take a look, see, and see what those fellas were up to. Uh, Kevin Sullivan is talking, by the way, because he wants to develop the Varsity Club. I'm of the opinion that Terry Gordy was probably in Japan. Was he not? Yeah, maybe so. Because the Varsity Club had guys like Mike Rotunda and Rick Steiner and, and now Steiner. Dr. Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Dr. Death. <laughs> Steiner. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like as I'm taking a look here, they are in all Japan here. Okay. Uh, or at least Terry Gordy is. Man, he was... Uh, rocking he did spend a little bit of time on the bash that year with you guys yeah and spent a little bit of time with the uwf i just yeah. loved i just loved terry gordy i loved his oh, presence. I, did too. I just loved his presence loved his presence on on um on the interviews that we did anytime that they would be in the studio october november and december he yeah. was uh working in all japan let's take a look and see where buddy roberts was now, Buddy Roberts, he was known to have a snub nose. So you would have had something in common with him. Did you know that? A snub nose. That's right. What's a snub nose? Like a short barrel pistol. In other words, he was packing. No, he, he was on the other side. He had a, a snub nose. You see, it means it was smaller. Oh, got it. Well, you're kind of slow. <laughs> I, you come up with these different phrases and, and different words all show the me, time. Show, show me with your hand, how big you think the barrel on a dirty, hairy gun is. Show me uh, with your hand. D dirty, like, hairy gun, dirty, hairy gun like that uh, higher. So we can see it on camera here. Okay. All right. Now, now how big do you think the barrel on a normal gun is like a, a, a we'll call it a, there you go. Okay. Now, what about a snub nose? You see, okay. So. You, now you understand what those words mean based on the way you used your hands. But when I say that <laughs> buddy Roberts had a snub nose, you got real confused. Okay. I just, you're talking about guns here. So I thought maybe he's packing. Well, so I, was but I know what, now I know what you're talking about. It's the Conrad Thompson double on tongue delay. Okay. Listen, I'll just, I'll just be real. I hear buddy Roberts didn't have a great big old dick, Tony. That's what I heard. Fuck, I'm trying to class this shit up a little bit and say snub nose. <laughs> I'm trying to class this shit up. You are years too late on this one, buddy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yes, sir. Sometimes I I stand up at church at mass and I do the reading of the scripture and I'm thinking in my brain, I wonder how many of these people that I'm talking to right here realize <sighs> The things what you're about I, to do on this yeah, program. Right. One of my jobs for a living. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think we're, you're with well within the confines of, um, social society acceptance, whatever, well, what look, you do on this program. The real yeah. challenge is when you go on a national program yeah. and you talk, I mean, it's national TV Yeah. and, and you say, we got to put a stop. Somebody has got to stop this shit about MJF like that to me is way more egregious than you getting on here and talking yeah. about belching. Okay. Well, I, I feel that, uh, <clears throat> I feel that our language, which is very colorful on here yeah. at times is exactly, Hateful. is exactly what the people who enjoy our podcast want to hear. I would agree with that <clears throat> shit. Yeah. So, uh, Oh, Wait, somebody's that calling me. People just got her wings. No, no, you know what? that sound means that Dr. Death is doing a promo. And what's okay. well, Hang on, watch this. Hang on. Before we go to Dr. Death, are you okay? Okay. This is a podcast, honey. I know it is. Hey, I don't want Medicare. Today on what happened when old man yells at clowns. <laughs> I get. Robo calls, I get four or five a day, and I know where they come from. Same area code, same three digits. Okay, 
Why don't you just block them on your phone, Tony? I do every time they, but they, they, they all come up with different numbers. I got you. And they all say anything. Hi, I'm calling about Medicare insurance. I say, yeah, go fuck yourself. Wow. Okay. I'm re- I'll do Medicare when I'm ready. Don't call me. Here's what you should say. Okay. Hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, so listen, you be the telemarketer and I'll be you. Okay. Okay. Ring. Hello. It's Conrad. Hi, I was calling about Medicare insurance. Um, I misspoke there. My name's Tony Schiavone. Are you, are you okay. sure you're looking for me? Are you looking for Tony Schiavone? Yes. I was looking for the old guy in your group. Okay, cool. So, uh, sir, may I call you, sir? Is that your pronoun? Do you, do you, sir? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, sir, do you have TNT where you live? TNT? What part of the country are you in, sir? Okay. I'm in, uh, I'm in, uh, um, I'm in, well, I can't, I'm not allowed to say that. Okay. Well, why would I answer any of your questions? If you're not allowed to tell me what part of Very the good. country you're in. Very good. So look, let me just Click. say this. Sir. Click. No, no, I'm with you, Click. sir. Do you have TNT? Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Then you should know who I am. I'm a real big fucking star. I'm Tony Schiavone. And every week my left elbow touches Excalibur's and every week my right elbow touches Taz's. And if I tell Excalibur or Taz that you continue to fuck with me on a semi-regular basis, one of them will start choking you out precipitously. Mm. There you go. You motherfucker. You, I think I've just, come up- he's going to a uh, commercial here. I believe. No, we're getting a package here on the horseman and I'm fired right. up. I'm about to take a listen. In the tape, JJ. What's going on? Let Come me on. first say, David, that I've been listening to your comments out here. And I've been listening to you talk about what you perceive to be a tension in the air these last couple of weeks. And indeed, there has been a tremendous amount of tension surrounding the four horsemen. In fact, it got so thick at times that you couldn't cut it with a serrated knife. And it all goes back to Thanksgiving night. It was a night that the four horsemen had a chance for a clean sweep to take back the World Heavyweight Championship, to hold on to the World Tag Team titles, and to destroy a legend. And we had a game plan that one athlete took to the ring every time the horseman gave it to him that compiled victory after victory after victory. We have an athlete that took that that same game plan and went in the ring and took the United States title. The game plan was fine when it worked for him. But you see, the minute that his 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 shortcomings ended in a result that was not to his liking, suddenly he looked around at everybody else and started to question the game plan. Now, the legendary Vince McMahon Lombardi, when he walked into the locker room and passed out the game plan to his players, if somebody took the playbook and said, Coach, I don't think this is going to work, and gave it back, I'll think of a game plan of my own. He was off the team, gone at that moment. Well, we tolerated the situation where this same individual suddenly insulted me by questioning the game plan. And there was this huge crevice that was widening every day, and my mind was preoccupied about how to solve this dilemma. Well, as everybody knows, December is Bunkhouse Stampede Month. And I got into a bunkhouse stampede because I wanted to be right in there to hold my boys together. And the situation developed when all the smoke settled and everybody turned nose to nose. There was nobody left in the ring but the four horsemen. And the referee jumped up on the apron and said, hey, keep this thing going. And I said, no, it stops right here. The horsemen will divide the money. And then the referee informed me, hey, the record book has got to be a winner. Well, it was at that moment that something that I never even remotely dreamed of passed in front of my mind, the chance for James J. Dillon to put his name in the record book alongside Dusty Rhodes and Big Bubba Rogers and a select few as winners of a bunkhouse stampede, a dream I never thought I'd realize. Arn Anderson right there by my side, high five, sacrificed himself over the top rope. Tully Blanchard sacrificed himself, high five and gone. And that's when it got real, real interesting. And I want to reflect back right now and take a look at this tape. I think you'll see the pieces all come together. So we go now to the footage and we see uh, a bunkhouse stampede sort of come as you are. Everybody's rocking jeans. Uh, And right in the middle of it, there's Lex Luger throwing mugs out in their cowboy boots and the jeans. He's wearing some some, uh, wrestling gear. 
boots and tights. And it comes down to Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, JJ Dillon, and Lex Luger. Let's track it. High fives all around. Forgot to track the uh, commentary, didn't we? That David had. Well, or- I like this. Hang on. <laughs> so Arn and Tully uh, acquiesce and say, "This one's for you." Eliminate themselves. Bill Alfonso's on the apron, as is David Crockett. So it's down to Lex Luger and. And JJ Dillon. Right. And Lex is now approaching JJ. Let's see if we can hear this reaction when this happens. Okay, well, I'm my own man. I'll make my own decision. So there you go. Very quickly, they dispense, and here comes Ter- here comes Tully Blanchard. Gets a big press slam, mm-hmm. big clothesline for Arn Anderson. Arn's into the ropes. David's trying to duck out. Power slam, man. Uh, Arn's going up for the rack here. Fans are going to go nuts. And now Tully Blanchard's going to put hard times on the total package. Takes out that knee with a chair. Here come a couple of elbows and now horsemen are going to do what the horsemen do this was well done man i enjoy this yeah i did too i thought it was a very good angle it, it kind of made and i don't know it kind of made lex look like a prima donna in a way you think so oh for sure i'm my own man but i mean yeah. even when are you asking me or are you telling me that right. showed you know hey right. i'm a badass whatever right this is good stuff, man. I dig it. I got to be honest. I've never actually seen this. Yeah, this is it's a good angle. It's a great angle. It's great horseman stuff, brother. And now here come the troops. Uh, Denny Brown's not going to do much. Uh, they're going to. And Nelson Royal is in. Mike Rotunda. Kendall Wyndham. Yeah, Kendall has come in. David Crockett, Thanksgiving night. I'm the one that said I had the perfect athlete and the perfect plan. It was not the plan that was not perfect. And we now know it was a so-called athlete that was very far from being perfect. David Crockett, I know time on this case station is very expensive, but I'm going to spend some of it. One year ago, J.J. Dillon came to me, came to Flair, came to Tully. He said, there's a guy down in Everglades of Florida with a fantastic body and willing to learn a diamond in the rough. So what we did was we sacrificed our time, our body, to train Luger in the aspects of being a horseman. He came along real well. Well, Luger, for you to stand in the forefront, correct James J. Dillon, Verbally, then put your hands on him physically. You put yourself in no man's land, fella. What's happened? The four horsemen were here long before you came here. They're going to be here long after you leave. Now, you're the perfect physical specimen. You're the total package. But what you are alone is just another man. With the horsemen, you rose to greatness. Better than you could ever be by yourself. But the bottom line is, my friend, you 
want to find out how good you are, you're looking at the measuring stick. We're not going to draw straws to see who gets on you, Luger. You want to be the total package. You're no longer a horseman. I'm going to look you out of eye. We're going to find it. Go talk about the game plan. The problem was the execution. The game plan was fine. You're not the athlete to pull it off. Not you think you are. You were coached by the greatest of them all, J.J. Dillon. You were trained by the greatest of them all, Tommy Blackson, myself, Rick Flair. Any shortcomings you had, you had on your own. Now you want to find out if you're the total package. You want a full grip on what the four horsemen are all about. You're looking at the measuring stick. I'm coming for you, Logan. Don't be looking for me. Yeah. All right, we'll be back with more action right after these messages. Man, they're taking a break, and I think we should too. There's a, a lot to unpack here today. I'm going to hit pause at 43.30. There it is, and we're taking a break right now to make you taking a break a little easier. On the show, uh, the story on the show here before, that uh, one of my very best friends at the office, he enjoys nicotine. But, buddy, it is getting, as we like to say, butt-ass cold here in Alabama. So I have seen him scurry outside freezes short and curly's off and then come back in. Ooh, don't have to do that anymore. Here's the, here's the reality. Lots of adults choose to use nicotine. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Just like everything. Not everyone uses nicotine, but if you do, you want to listen up. This is an ad for Lucy breakers. And if you're one of the millions of adults who use nicotine, you know that not all the products are created the same. There's one new product that we believe stands above the rest. Lucy Breakers are the only nicotine pouch that gives you a blast of flavor from the first moment to the last. Each pouch contains a capsule that you break open to release a rush of flavor. It doesn't fade away like those other pouches. You know, the ones that rhyme with thin. They come in so many flavors, mint, berry, citrus, mango, even espresso. You don't have to go to the gas station or corner store to get them. Just order online and they'll be shipped straight to your door. Every order gets free shipping. Plus, if you subscribe, you'll save 15% and never run out. And Tony, I think we got a special offer right now. So whether you use nicotine while working, creating, or playing, Lucy Breakers are the intelligent choice. The special deal for our listeners is get 10% off your first order when you use our promo code WHW at checkout. And shipping is always free. That's lucy.co. Promo code WHW to receive $10 off and free shipping. Visit lucy.co for more details. And we thank Lucy for sponsoring the podcast. Here comes the fine print, guys. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age. And every order is age verified. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Guys, the best way to support the program is to support our sponsors. If you use nicotine or someone in your life uses nicotine, you want to offer them the opportunity to use it differently. Try lucy.co. That's L-U-C-Y.co. And the promo code is WHW. Save $10 off and get free shipping. So think about that uh, nicotine user in your life this year. Uh, let's jump into it, Tony. I'm at 4330. In three, two, one, play. So we got Ron Garvin versus Larry Stevens, but what everybody wants to talk about is what happened with Lex Luger. We heard from JJ Dillon. He sort of laid it all out. We heard what Arn Anderson thought about it, uh, which seems like, all right, that's setting them up for a feud. We didn't hear anything from Tully and we didn't hear anything from the nature boy. But I liked that angle. I thought it was well done. What'd you think? Yeah, it was a great angle. It really was. It really made Luger, uh, a, even a bigger star than he was already going out on his own. Two things. Yep. Did you realize when JJ cut a hell of a promo? Yes, he did. But before the footage, the first part of the promo, did you notice how he Wanted to say Vince Lombardi, but almost said Vince McMahon. I did. He said the legendary Vince McLombardi. <laughs> he did. It I was, was wondering if you noticed it too. Yeah, but I it, sure did. <laughs> it almost fell right out of there. Yes, sir. 
And number two, God, the camera work here is shitty. You why know do you why think they, that is? You're at a TV station. Yeah, they ju- they used anybody to be cameraman. You could have worked in the office. Hey, I'd like to run camera on on on. Uh, Wait, so you're saying they would have let like stupid ass Silva? Like, yes, they, they would have let him. I I. Now that's a pretty sharp camera move right there, but I just think I I've told you this before. Dolphins punter Rick Roby. Yeah came in the studio one day and they let him run a camera. Wow. And this is one of the, this was one of the reasons that I had, I had a lot of reasons why I left WW to for WWE, uh, more money chance to work for the WWE Jim heard. But one of my reasons was I just didn't think that that Turner broadcasting, once they bought the company cared that much about wrestling. Right. And I think that came from back when I was in the studios and watching how they operated. It just seemed to be like, eh, it's wrestling. We'll throw anybody on camera. And listen, they had some very, very good cameramen. Ricky Lassiter was a cameraman who was in the studio. Uh, Tim Smith was a cameraman in the studio. Long time. I'm going to, there's uh, uh, some other guys who were in the studio that knew what they were doing. Um, but I just, overall, they would just put anybody on there. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. So, And Ronnie Garvin, just. <laughs> uh, the Garvin stomp. Where, where were you at on the Garvin stomp? I loved it. Yeah. Here it is. It's fucking stupid. You didn't like it. Oh, it's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, there's a lot of dumb things you'll see if you keep watching wrestling, dude. Oh man, I saw I saw two wrestlers fall in a vat of mimosas a couple of years ago. Really? I don't remember that. I saw one wrestler run down another with a golf cart. I don't remember I that saw either. One wrestler get thrown into a pool, and he when he came up out of the water, he was a different human being. Wow, really? Fucking crazy shit, bro. Did you ever yeah. see a wrestler use a use a, some sort of a device to destroy a ring? I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I you even saw a you, you, you won't bring that up, but you'll bring all the other shit up. Look, well, she run that. I, up. I, I know. I know where you're, you're not allowed about. to talk about. WWE I know where your fucking program. legions is. You, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay. It's not always easy when you're in the NWA. You see, because it's the best there is in professional wrestling. The biggest money, the biggest prizes, the toughest competition. There is nothing cartoon. How about the NWA? Yikes. Believe me, when you step in the ring with the best, you know it. I'm going to tell you, you can see about a four horseman. Well, I don't care what happens to him. But you see, you know what the problem is? Too much money. Big egos. Biggest egos you'll ever find are in the NWA. Well, that's what makes it go around and around. That's what makes it so interesting. And I'm going to tell you, I've got an ego of my own. But I don't belong to no team. No more four horsemen down to three. Three to go. Well, it'll be interesting to see. But like I said, I don't belong to no team. I'm my own man. I do what I want. I'm after title. I'm after money. Nothing else. I don't answer to nobody. I'm going to tell you, Ric Flair, the world's heavyweight champion, I'm coming back. I ain't laying down. I ain't dying. I don't have cancer. That's right. I'm coming after you. 1988 is going to be the year of Roddy Garvin again. And I'm going to tell you another thing, too. Dusty Rhodes better watch out. He's got a title around his waist. I might find me a partner for some tag team belts. Now, the bunk house, big money. That's what it's all about. I want some of it. I'm going to get me some of it. I'm going to step in that ring, 25 of the man. I'm all by myself as far as I'm concerned. Everything goes. The most violent type of matches. You get goosebumps. You get you get butterflies in your stomach when you step in there because I'm going to tell you something. It is awesome. The most dangerous type of matches. Everything goes. 25 maniacs is there. As far as I'm concerned, that's what you're putting into the ring. 25 maniacs, and I'm one of them, and I want to win some of them. There he is. Watch out for the bunkhouse. Then let's go to the ring. So listen, I love that promo because he, he comes out right away and says, there's nothing cartoon about mm. the NWA. Right. And I also loved as he's talking a little later, I don't know why it tickled. 
that promo is just one, one hit after another. Mm -hmm. There were so many funny things in there that just jumped off the page to me, but the cartoon, yeah, man, that, that really set the, uh, that felt like a real shot. Did it not? Yeah. It was a shot at Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling. Yes. Sure. Uh, and he was pretty intense. They, they closed in on his face, which I thought was very cool. And, and I thought that it almost seemed like he mentioned dusty Rhodes Like he was getting ready to turn heel now, didn't it? I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, and then he talked about which, which made me think of another thing. He talked about bunkhouse stampede and big money, right? Yes. Back then, back then you, you, you felt as a wrestling fan that winning the bunkhouse stampede or winning a match was big for these guys, these wrestlers, because it meant more money. Right. Today, and even JR brings this up, he brings this up at times. He hasn't brought up much. In his commentary today, JR will say, Well, you win, you get more money. Yeah. I don't think fans believe that anymore. They don't, because we all know it's guaranteed contract. That's right. So I, I just think that back then, when you heard an announcer or a wrestler in a promo talk about making more money, you go, Ah, there's the there's the rub. There's the uh well, it's like they do in boxing and, and MMA. I mean, it's called prize fighting, right? You know, the winner makes more money. Yeah. And, and that's, that's usually the case. Even then, uh, yeah. even though people don't think about it, that's the case. That's the case in, uh, in the playoffs, yeah. so, you know, real sport, you get playoff bonuses. Yeah, You do, but you know what? It used to mean something more. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, I agree. That's why I think. Well, I brought this up many times. I don't know if I brought it up here on this podcast. That's why I think that that the incentive to win in baseball and even in football is not what it used to be. We agree. So, because I mean, if, if I'm a big time athlete that makes millions and millions and millions of dollars yes. a year, and let's say I play in baseball and there's a chance for us to go to the playoffs or there's a chance of me to go back home, maybe play golf and just lounge around. Mm, had a long season. Yeah. Who gives a shit if we go or not? But back then it meant you had a great year financially. I don't think that necessarily is the case where guys. Oh, I don't think it's necessarily is, but I think there's some of them. I think the incentive is gone. Listen, Conrad, you know, as well as anybody else, you, you, and you know that money is the biggest incentive out there. Making more oh, money for your sure. family, making a better lifestyle yeah. for your family is yes. a big incentive. If you've got that lifestyle already, what's another couple hundred thousand dollars to these guys? Nothing. Well, I think when their career's over, they want rings. You know, I mean, I think when the, 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 the magic Johnsons get together with the Michael Jordans and the Larry birds. It comes down to who's got the most rings at this table. There is a competitive yeah. mode in those guys. Right. Body. I know you've been watching the uh, Shaq documentary. Mm -hmm. You you have, haven't you? Oh, it's the best. It's tremendous. I, it was very good on, on the first episode where he's fouled Michael Jordan one time and he went down to pick up Michael Jordan and Michael said, do not pick me up. Yeah. Never help anybody up. Never help anybody up. He, and he's great. Good foul. I just, to me, that's how. Fucking tough Michael Jordan was, but that first episode of the Shaq shit is yeah. one of the best. Yeah. Of all time. Yeah. And uh and Lois said she could identify with having a father in the military. Being a very, you know, rigid, tough disciplinarian, yeah. you know. Well that yeah. explains why she is the way she is now, you know, with yeah. making the kids eat donkey dicks for dinner and things right. like that. Right. And that's really something that we haven't spent any time talking about here on the program, but I think we should have Lois come on the show one day. Maybe what we'll do is we'll get Lois to Huntsville, get her in front of our green screen. We'll have a costume so she can look like dusty during the hard times promo. <laughs> she can talk about, you know, feeding the dogs, don feeding the kids donkey dicks for, do Oh my <laughs> Lord. Look at this. <laughs> that you have the strongest team. My in goodness. Wrestling. Look at these guys. No, stop damn crooked. I got some ass, you Paul Jones. You got some sort of problem. You got two problems you want us to take care of. We proved everybody all over this world for five years now that the hockey animal, we're the two stars, guys, and professional wrestling, and also the two best fighters. There ain't nobody in the wrestling sport 
that's stronger than us. And I got one other thing to clear up there, Crockett. Everybody and anybody out there, one thing's for certain about Hawk and myself and our six-man partner, Dusty Rhodes. We still don't care. Anytime, anywhere, we'll defend our belts. Tell him, Hawk. Well, David Crockett, it seems like x lax Luger has finally gotten totally constipated by the four horsemen. And the four horsemen seem to be riding to the edge of apocalypse now. Well, within every bad bunch of apples, there's the one that's worse than the others. And he just showed himself to be worse than the others. Now, bunkhouse stampedes are kind of match what we grew up with fighting bunches of people and walking out the winner will be deviating septums ripping out goozles and knocking tartar off the teeth of every person who's stupid enough to not just jump over the top rope and get rid of the inevitable the inevitable being me and animals sitting in the bunkhouse stampedes jumping over the top rope together and collecting the money then we give it to Paul. He takes it to the bank. Lord knows how much we got. Don't make no difference to us. Because what makes a difference to us is beating people up and being the best. The Legion of Doom. Like it or leave it. Yeah, the crack, and I think we've summarized it all. Paul Jones, I think you're opening up a can of worms that you really ought to think about. The Bunko Stampede, how can these two men not be the favorites, the strongest men in professional wrestling? And when they set their mind on a goal, and their goal is the Bunko Stampede, there's nothing that can stop them. The animal, the hawk, the legion of doom, number one now, number one forever. We snack on danger and we dine on death. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know they can wear that armor in the bunkhouse stampede. We'll be back with more action right after this. Great stuff. I can't wait to talk about the Road Warriors and Bruce Pritchard. But first, we're going to have to take a break here. I'm going to do it at 57.04. Uh, and there it is. And, of course, we're running this time out right now. We should probably be talking a little bit about those hairstyles that we just saw Road Warriors rocking. And those, how would you describe those hairstyles, Tony? Uh, those would be, uh, half buzz cuts. Yeah. I mean, they, um, maybe they were follically challenged and they thought, Could be. Well, the look, Could be. Could be. well, the reality is two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35, more than 50 million men in the U S suffer from male pattern baldness. Got that old Arn Anderson, less colored yarmulke going. Heaps has more five-star reviews than any of their competitors. There's only two, that's right, just two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Our friends at Keeps have both. Keeps offers you a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair. You get convenient virtual consultations with a licensed medical provider, and you get medications delivered straight to your door every three months, meaning you don't have to leave your home. You got 24-7 care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to help you in making your hair goals a reality. Also, low cost, too. Treatment started just $10 a month. Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA approved medications to prevent hair loss. Treatment plans are affordable, like half the cost mm-hmm. of a pharmacy price. Right, right. Keeps has everything your hair needs. Delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. I want a reminder here. Prevention is key. You see, treatments can take four to six months to see results. So act fast. And when it comes to your hair, we want you to save more and spend less, Tony. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com. Was that my cue to talk? Yes. Okay. If (laughs) never know, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K. E-E-P-S dot com slash W-H-W or if you're from the South, W-H-W to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash W-H-W to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash W-H-W Where are you at on this beat, Tony? What's that? Where are you at on this beat? Come on. 
Man, we gotta learn how to play music like this. Keep, keep your fucking hair. Dot keeps Man. dot com. This this type of shit right here. This would get the ladies in the mood. If, I mean, if you just had more hair, you know. Well, if you were of age, I've aged out of the ladies. Ah, no, you hadn't, Tony. Oh yeah, those luscious locks. You stay, you stay tuned. I'm gonna figure out what you need to make it happen with those ladies. But the hair, you gotta have the hair, Tony. I'm gonna get my hair long in a ponytail, lose 100 pounds, and still be an old son of a bitch. Hey man, I'm fat and I've been fucking on the reg for a long time. You can do it. You just gotta have the hair and you gotta have a hard wiener. We'll tackle the hair now. K e e p s dot com slash w h w. Get your hair cut. See what happens. Don't. Throw it out. Let it flow. Yeah. I mean, you think Arn Anderson back in the day when he was a single man had as much fun as Ric Flair? Probably not. You know why? Flair had hair. more hair. Boom. No hair, no flair. Wait, that might be something different. K E P S dot com slash W H W. What happened when you grew some hair, you bald motherfuckers? Why don't you try it? Support the show. What's the worst thing that could happen? We got vibes like this. We got moves like this and these kind of songs. Who could fuck with us? We got all this hair. Where was happening? Yeah. Dot com. Keeps dot com slash WHW. Get back to the show, Tony. I'm going to do a countdown. Keep that music going, Silva. Here we go. 5704 is where I'm at. And we're going to hit it. We're going to hear from the Nature Boy. And when we think about the Nature Boy, we think about hair. Keeps. Here we go. In three, two, one, play. All right, JJ, I'm glad that you consented to come out, back out here and the World Heavyweight Champion, Ric Flair, because uh, he, he really didn't get the same much. David Crockett, I feel like the, the whole weight of the world has been lifted off my shoulders, and I can breathe a deep breath, and I really feel great. You know, the four horsemen, we got more hardware than ace hardware. The world tag team champs, and of course, the only world champion in my eyes if there's ever been who else but Nature Boy Ric Flair. You know, David, you sit out here, and you either have the pleasure or the displeasure of listening to a lot of great athletes in the National Wrestling Alliance tell you what they are, where they've been, what they're going to be. But very few athletes walk out here, David Crockett, as you know, open their mouth, tell you what they're going to do, do it, and then bring the ingredients, the final ingredients, if you may, a world championship belt. There's not a lot of them around. You have to be great to own one. Now, this deal with Luger, I got to be honest with you. I liked Luger. Luger is one of the greatest athletes that I have personally had the pleasure of ever being associated with. J.J. Dillon would have never taken him under consideration to be a four, one of the four horsemen if he wasn't qualified all the way along the lines. Mind, body, athletic ability, desire, heart. Luger had it all. And he had the privilege, and I mean the privilege, of being associated with Ric Flair. This is what Ric Flair is above all else. He is the world champion. And Lex Luger had the privilege of walking through airports, of walking into every major arena. Bank by my side, he was my friend. My companion, a man I liked and a man I admired. But Luger, somewhere out there, you started to think that it was your wheel that was turning the whole deal round and round. And that, my friend, led to your downfall. You see, Luger, you've got the best body in our sport. Unequal, the best body in our sport. But night in and night out, a lot of beautiful women with great bodies come to me and say, Rick, take me upstairs. But the bottom line is, if a girl that's got all this can't use that body, she doesn't go up elevated with me. You understand what I'm telling you? 
My you got it all, pal, but you couldn't walk the aisle and make it go. James J. Dillon has taken me to two rings as the world champion. Two, you got nowhere. You got nowhere. This is world championship wrestling. I'm the world champion. I'm the telly. I'm the world champion. And you can walk out here, tear off your shirt, brag to yourself and the whole world what you're going to do, where you've been. But, pal, the bottom line is, in this sport, you don't trust that line, and you don't pass go till Ric Flair says so. Get it. All right, let's go. Chalk it up as an experience. Find somewhere else to hang your hat because this is my world and I control it. Let's go to the ring. Uh, that was a pretty fired up promo there from the nature boy. Wow. Uh, I thought it was, uh, impressive the way, uh, he delivered the intensity. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that whole. (laughs) Take him up in the elevator. Lots of women with good bodies say, nature boy, take me upstairs. If they can't make that body go, they don't go on the elevator. <laughs> make that body go. Make that body go. Well, well, yeah. How about Sting here, buddy? Somebody had a real great poster, a homemade poster of him. Early Sting here, yeah. and uh, he's taking on uh, Tommy Angel. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to see uh, a Lex Luger promo coming up here in a minute. But first, I wanted to mention the Road Warriors, who we saw before commercial break. And man, I love that look. That was so intimidating with the big spikes, the big shoulder pads. It looked like they had just freshly spray painted everything. It looked awesome. And you know what what I think of when I, when I, uh, when I see those spikes, I I think about the time that he gigged me right here with a spike, you know, below the eye and how close it was inches away from taking my eye out. Just he, he poked the spike in your face on purpose. No, I, it, it's, it's in the comic book, by the way, I'm, I, I'm doing the ring announcing at the forum in LA and I say, ladies and gentlemen, here, here are the road. Well, they, they come in the ring. I would do the ring announce after everybody was in the ring and I tried to get out of the way to give them the center of the ring. And I just went up against the turnbuckle pads and Hawk being all jacked up. Like he was walked the turnbuckle pad where I was standing there. I see. And the spike hit me here and a spike hit me in the top of the head and gig me right here. Oh. Uh, I just keep thinking that spike could have hit me. I just put the eye right out. Uh, anyway, what you were saying? I talked to a great personal close friend of the show, your pal and mine, Bruce Pritchard. The other day we uh, talked how's, about how's he doing? He's fantastic. Good. We spent uh, our entire episode talking about the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, uh-huh. and I asked, "Hey, man." Did you, do you know that Vince ever tried to get these guys? You know, what we would see that he would do powers of pain. And if you take a look at the powers of pain and the presentation they had, the WWF, it looks well, like a road warrior ripoff and, you know, fans have often said, oh, demolition was a road warrior ripoff, but in reality it was powers of pain. I mean, they were just carbon copy. Okay. Did you ever try to get them? And he goes, oh yeah. I remember we tried to get them before. Survivor Series 90, uh, the, the, the first Survivor Series. Okay. And I was like, wait a minute. So you were trying to sabotage Starcade, and boy, he went on a rant. You got to see it. I mean, he was in a loud and clear voice right up in the camera. He denied that Vince McMahon tried to sabotage Starcade, and he even <laughs> admitted that he tried to hire the Road Warriors for it when the kayfabe hometown of Chicago was the host of Starcade. Uh-huh. And they were in a title match with, uh, the horseman, Arn and Tully. Yeah. But he denied that <clears throat> Vince McMahon tried to contact cable systems or any of that. Yeah. Well, good for them because the winners can rewrite history any way they want. Take a listen to this. We've heard him talk. We want Lex Luger in here. And I think I see him over here to find out exactly Lex. What's wrong with the four horsemen and you? You know what, Tony Schiavone? <laughs> Over pocket. I'd be a liar. I've heard all these people, everyone on national television, if I didn't tell you that this is a very painful time for me. 
a very emotional time for me, both personally and professionally. You see, I have sweat, bled, trained, lived with the Four Horsemen for the past year. Some of the best times of my life that I will always cherish were spent with the Four Horsemen. On a personal note, the Four Horsemen live what they say. The Four Horsemen live life to their fullest, and I've had some of the most cherished personal moments of my life with that group of people. When I first came here, I said, Lex, the superstar. I said, the man will be the next world heavyweight champion. Everyone has paths to choose in life. When I came here to the NWA, which has the greatest athletes on the face of this earth, I had paths to choose. I saw an elevator over here with a group of men standing there, waving, smiling, who were very successful, who are tremendous athletes. Over here, I saw a flight of stairs to climb. Ambition in life can sometimes, when you're an ambitious person such as myself, be blinding. You have to live with your decisions in life. I had a very close personal friend at one time, a man by the name of Barry Windham, who came out here my first day on national TV and said, Luger, you're making a mistake. I spit in his face. I have to live with that every day the rest of my life. We all make decisions. We have to live with them. We all make our beds. We have to lie in them. But when I decided to become a four horseman, I made a full commitment. I was a team player. Whenever a game plan was laid down, I did it to the best of my ability. Even though sometimes I'd lay awake with my eyes open at night when I'm by myself and I'd stare at that ceiling and it would prey on my conscience some of the things we did to go through with the game plan, J.J. Dillon. Now, I have to say right now that leading up to Starcade, I held, I held up my end of the bargain as one of the horsemen. Now, in Starcade, there was a game plan laid out. I don't say I totally agree with it, but being the team man, I always was. I went through it because when I climbed in that ring, once that match was underway, I knew that match was mine to win or lose to win or lose on my own with no outside interference. But when that chair came in that ring, my personal commitment, my personal feelings for the four horsemen, I went through with that game plan and the rest is history. I felt I had that match in control, but I went through with the game plan, James. The rest is history. Now after Starcade, when I was out here, a lot of guys are standing out here with our belts before Starcade. Ric Flair was one of them. That's right. Iron Anderson stood out here without a belt for a long time. I was always supportive. I always offered my assistance. The first time the total package sits out here without a belt, I feel a little bit of a knife in the back. And I feel it starting to twist. So when I decide, that as great a group as the four horsemen are, it's time for me to stand up for myself as a man. I said, James, when I'm out there ringside, you're welcome to come along, but I will win, lose, or draw on my own abilities as an athlete. Well, I didn't guess that didn't sit too well with so many other teammates. And that led to, I think, what we have here is a little bit of footage of what happens what this led to when it all came to a head in Miami one night. You see David right here, Iron Anderson is telling me what I'm supposed to do to be a team player. But this was a competitive situation. This was one of the bunkhouse stampedes. This is a, a athlete chooses, this is a match where there has to be a winner. I'm sick and tired of shortcuts. If there's going to be a winner and a bunkhouse stampede, 
If there's going to be a winner in a bunkhouse stampede, it's going to be by an athlete who competes for that. Friends or no friends, associates or no associates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrestle for that, and they didn't want to do that. And you see what the bottom line here is a result of it. All right, Lex. Here it comes. There you see Tully. He takes a chair this time. JJ in the corner, he's motioning to drop it down on you. Well, I haven't seen this before, David. I can't say I enjoy watching it. Tony, is it just me or is this segment going way too long? Well, I don't know why they, they came up with the footage a second time. Yeah. I mean, it feels a little redundant. I do understand that we want to show parts of it and have him narrate it, but yeah, they let him just flounder for a long time on that promo. He really right. needed a, na- a baby face mouthpiece here if that was yeah. possible, but no question. Uh, what would that have even looked like? Who would have a, a good baby face mouthpiece have been? Uh, it, it wouldn't have been. I mean, the, obviously he's, he's pointing towards Wyndham, but Barry Wyndham wouldn't have. Maybe it would have helped out a little bit, but Barry wasn't a great promo either. Well, Barry I, becomes a big storyline piece as well, but yeah. Yeah. It, yeah less than uh, ideal promo yeah. here. We're back and, to it. And it's still going to. A lot's happened between us. But let me tell you one thing right now, right off the top. From now on, there's no shortcuts for the total package, Lex Luger. From now on, when we step in that ring, I am going to be the athlete everyone ever thought I could be. I'm going to be the man ever thought I could be. You see right there, the four horsemen, you have made the two biggest mistakes of your athletic career. The first mistake was jumping on my case in Miami and leaving me laying for lame. But you see, I'm standing here right now. I'm standing on my own two feet. Your first biggest mistake was not getting the job done. On number two, what you've done right now and here, we have a situation where this is emotional time for me, David. I'll tell you right now, sometimes I lose my train of thought. Please. (laughs) My God. (laughs) The second biggest mistake is you stepped on a lot of toes of a lot of top wrestlers all over this world. Uh, well, I'll tell you what right now. Oh, thank God. You have never. <sighs> At least he takes his shirt off here, right? Yes. I'm an athlete. What about those jeans? Like the tunnel package, Lex Luger, because you see, I'm going to climb those stairs. And if you get in my way, I'm going to kick you down them stairs, you see, because I will fulfill my potential without the horseman. I will become the greatest superstar this sport has ever seen. Bottom line, you can count on it. And if you get in my way, you're going to get stepped on. Bottom line. Truly, the total package. We'll be back with more. Tony, I'm exhausted. And uh, I feel like I personally need to take a break. I'm at 114.02. I'm going to get it paused when I get to five. There it is. Tony, you were saying earlier, as we were talking about, maybe you need to spend some time with some ladies. And you're like, ah, I don't think I can do that. Yeah, it's over. Well, here's a little pro tip for you, Tony. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. That's right. Going to get you ding dong real, real hard, daddy. How hard? So hard, even a cat couldn't scratch it. The other day, Lois was trying to make some Christmas decoration. Realized she couldn't find the hammer. She yelled for her other hammer. Tony, you get some blue chew and your coffee and come downstairs. Tony listens. Tony minds. Put it right at the top of that honeydew list. Came downstairs. (laughs) 
knocking holes and everything. Okay, I thought that was that was me walking downstairs. I wasn't. Blue Chew is a unique online service that's going to get your ding dong hard. That's for Tony. That's exactly right, Jr. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Guys, we're joking around. We're having a lot of fun. This is serious business. This is so easy. It's all done online. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversation. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA. They're prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. We've had a lot of great sponsors here today who would love to be considered for some of your holiday shopping. Maybe you got a spouse who's hard to buy for. Maybe this has been a year where well, things are getting tied around the house. Let me tell you something that you may not have thought about. Holidays are stressful for her. She's got all this cooking. She's got all this cleaning. She's got customers coming to deal with. She's got family coming in from out of town. She's got presents to wrap. She's got a house to decorate. Mama needs a release. Mama needs you to be a stallion. Yeah, you can get her a nice present and unwrap it. But what if you unwrapped what she really wanted? What if you made a lasting impression? What if you showed her them freshly shaved jingle balls? And then when you... You got to go again, Daddy. The gift that keeps on giving. Blue Chew. And it'll uh, put smiles on people's faces. Isn't that right, Tony? Yes. Gleaming smiles on people's faces. So... If you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to reform, chew it and do it. Have better sex. And we got yeah. a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code WHW at checkout. Just pay the $5 shipping cost. That's BlueChew.com, promo code WHW to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast, which comes to you from the Blue Chew studios each and every week. Man, Blue Chew, the gift that keeps on giving. Can you imagine if Ric Flair had Blue Chew back in 87? Woo! Would he have ever slipped? He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be concerned about them elevator rides. They'd all been the same. <laughs> well, they say he could have a five-star match with a broomstick. You ever try to fuck a broomstick, Tony? <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. We talked a couple weeks ago about how Maybe, oh, hypothetically, okay. Vince McMahon used to hook up with the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, Can you okay. imagine? I, I, I retold that story to Clint from Hershey yeah. this week. He don't listen. And Clint from yeah. Hershey looked to me and said, God damn, pal, your dick is so vascular. And I was like, oh, my God, I never even thought about vascular. I mean, you think about how lean and how cut and how veiny yeah. the Ultimate Warrior was. Yeah. You could have had... An ultimate warrior dick if you had some blue chew. You know what I'm saying? You could have. <laughs> but unlike you, I don't think about my ween. Okay. Bluechew.com. The promo code is WHW. And right now I am at 114.05. Here we go. In three, two, one, play. <laughs> Larry Zabisco with baby doll going to be taking on Rocky King. And that is not even our last match. Believe it or not. We've got two after this. Oh my We're going to see uh, Nikita Koloff taking on Thunderfoot number one. Uh, and we've also got, uh, a Nikita promo. I believe we're going to see, uh, a dusty Rhodes bunkhouse stampede promo, but I don't think it's a live one here. Mm -hmm. And then we get the midnight express taking on big Bubba and, uh, and George South. And then we get your favorite, a little new breed promo to wrap us up. Yep. And uh, next week, Tony, you and I are going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be talking about Nitro from 1997. Wow. I love this. It's Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's the debut for WCW with Bret Hart. So the very first time we see Bret Hart fresh off of knocking out Vince McMahon five weeks earlier. Here he'll be on Nitro. We'll also see your boy, Mike Jones, who take on Ray trailer, Disco Inferno, your favorite. It's well-established here. He's going to defend his TV title. He gets Eugene Nagata. 
Fit Finley's not going to slap his leg. Not one time when he wrestles Dean Malenko, <laughs> a Parker will be teaming with psychosis to take on Ray Mysterio and Hooventude. Probably going to be the barn burner. Yep. Flippy flippy. Arn Anderson. And wait, what does that mean? Flippy flippy flip over the top rope. You know, I got you Wednesday. Arn Anderson and Ric Flair will cut a promo. Scott Hall will wrestle Chris Jericho. Hey, is that the match? We'll have to see. Scott Norton and Coney Ann will take on uh, the Steiner brothers. Booker T will be wrestling Randy Savage. That sounds like fun. Chris Benoit will be in there with friend of the show, Scotty Riggs. Buff Bagwell will be taking on Lex Luger. We'll get Ric Flair versus Kurt Henning after they had a little falling out with a cage door in Winston Salem. Right. And lastly, it's Sting. just a couple of weeks before he takes on. Hollywood Hulk Hogan at the biggest starcade of them all. I can't believe uh, that we're in the 25th anniversary month of Starcade 97. Yeah. Such fun you and I have had on this program over the years. And now we find ourselves watching Larry Zabisco wrestle Rocky King. It's not all good stuff, you know? No, it's not all good stuff, but I listen, I, I'm a big fan of Zabisco's. Just, oh, me too, for sure. Yeah, just the way he, he could talk. He was a great commentator. He was. I mean, when they when, when they asked me, you know, who are some of your favorites to work with, you know, Larry Zbysko is near the top of the list, maybe at the top of the list because he was so easy to work with as a commentator. And not only that, he was so good at what he did. I mean, Larry was great. And he could talk and he made us laugh. I saw him at WrestleCade, made me laugh again. So, no, I'm just down in Orlando. Just, you know, not doing much. Playing golf. Playing golf. Enjoying the good life. Yeah, just I can't play as much golf as I used to be able to. I might have a few cocktails, Shivani. <laughs> Maybe some of those left-handed cigarettes. <laughs> when was the last time you... uh smoked a little bit of the, uh, the devil's lettuce. I don't got it. Probably college. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't blow smoke in my lungs. I don't either. I've, uh, I've never smoked anything besides yeah. meats. Uh, myself, we have a discussion anyway over here. We decided Barry Windham has an emotional problem. I came out like a nice guy. I gave him a chance to hand over the belt. He thinks he's a cowboy. Maybe you can relate to this. Would George Custer ride into the little big horn if he knew 10 billion Indian running to the side of a mountain? But Wyndham, you know what's waiting for you. As a matter of fact, I think that the whole wrong idea about me. You know, I didn't wrestle 13 glorious years to get assets worth 1 million bucks so some kid can go to Hawaii with a beautiful death mute when I'm gone. Because I'm going there. And Wyndham, you're going to be out riding the range with your little cowboy outfit. In an old Indian, you can play Lone Ranger and Tonto all day long. Baby Doll and myself, we're going to climb the stairway to heaven. I like that. Very good. On top of that stairway, there's going to be a big statue of me right on top of my safety deposit box with a big piece of gold hair. Shut up! It's going to say Larry Zabisco, the heavyweight champion of the world. And Wyndham, someday you're going to realize all you ever were was nothing more than the first step in our stairway to heaven. Hey! A bunch of oh. We'll be back right after these messages. I got to tell you, with Lex Luger and Larry Zabisco doing back to back promos, we're falling off a cliff a little bit here. Mm. You didn't like uh, Zabisco's promo? It's fine, but I'm just saying the Zabisco, I mean, the, yeah. anybody after Luger. Right. Kind of nodding off zone a little bit. Yeah, I know. Although, you know, one thing I, I've got to say about Luger's promo. Yeah. It was, the fans were quiet listening to him. I yes. mean, they were, they were shushed a couple of times. You heard people, shh. But most promos, even like Zabisco's promos, have noise. The fans are making noise. 
but Lugers, they didn't. Maybe they were asleep. Don't know, but they didn't make noise. Yeah. And Zabisco used some of his classic lines. Glorious is one of his things he says. Beautiful death mute. That's another thing he uses now and then. Some of the Zabisco isms that, you know, that I'm familiar with. We, uh, we're an interesting time here. Mm. Did you know in, and we'll call it December of 87, you know, we're on the heels of the sabotage starcade. Did you know, Hey, this thing's fixed. No, we're in trouble. Or ha- had that not become apparent to you yet? No, it was, I, it became apparent once, uh, to me, once we, once we bought the UWF, it, okay. became, uh, it became apparent to me that when Jimmy and dusty left for Dallas, that we were in big trouble. Yeah. Because there was a big, big divide and rift within the family. And that did not, this whole thing obviously did not sit well with David or Jackie. Right. Francis or even Mrs. Crockett, the mother. And so when there was divide in the family, you obviously knew that something was up, something was wrong. And the, the criticism of Dusty's booking became more and more apparent. And it really uh, came to a, a crescendo when Dusty went over in the bunkhouse stampede. Right. The pay-per-view. I think that was also the same time that a bunkhouse stampede that Flair wrestled Road Warrior Hawk that night. Um, anyway, I, I just, yeah, I knew it was. Didn't realize how bad it was. But there had been talk, and, and I'm not so sure that it happened here. It may have happened during 88. There had been a lot of talk about Turner buying Jim Crockett promotions. All that happened in 88. Okay. You know, 88 is going to be really the last year. One year from today, as we're watching this, December of 87, this company wouldn't exist. Right. Turner bought it. And it's just, you think about just how hot they were and how big they had been. Nikita, help us out here. So <laughs> Is it right here? Right here is what is all about being a champion like me, like my super partner, Dusty Ron, USA champion, world TV champion. That's what it's all about right here. I don't care who it is. Four horsemen, Tony Chandler, Eddie Gilman. It could be Ivan Korov, Paul Jones, and any one of you, man. Sign a contract. And I'll go right out here in the ring for this right here. You see, I'm afraid of nobody. And I think that people know I'm afraid of nobody. In the past, maybe last two weeks, Terry Taylor and the government. First time, you will you attack me with Jay. Second time, third time, and then you will attack me and try to break my leg. Well, that's good. You go ahead and try. You try to hurt Nikita Kola. But you see, if I have to wrestle one to one with my super brother, two against two, or one against maybe 25, for sure, it's that. You do it, I'll do it. You see, I am friend of a no man. And Red Flair, I don't want to say to you. You come out here and you tell all these people that they say, you wrong. No, you wrong. You see, this world that go around is just as much Nikita Kola as you, Red Flair. All right, Nikita's super partner. I just liked him better as a heel, man. Am I wrong? I- I was thinking the exact, isn't that amazing? I was thinking the exact same thing. I know, well, we need to listen to this first. No, this is it's a repeat from last week. Okay, all right. Look on the boot. The stampede being the baddest. 25, 30 million. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to put the ankles up in the head. <laughs> all that it, shit. To go. Somebody uh, to kick somebody's booty. And to show up in the chin. Anyway, I was thinking the same thing about Nikita. 
and I here's what I was thinking. I know when Magnum went down, they needed to do something. Right. And I know the moment at the Charlotte, the old Charlotte Coliseum, now the Independence Arena, or Bojangles Arena, whatever it's called now, when Dusty was in the cage and Nikita Koloff came in to help him out, I know it was a tremendous moment. It was a moment where I remember standing back there and Jim Crockett said, man, that makes you, that was that made my eyes water. And mine too, it was a moment that I'll never forget. Yeah. But Nikita Koloff should have been a heel. Right. And should have stayed a heel because he was a super fucking heel. Um, that's just my opinion. But I was thinking the same thing when he was talking, man, just be the heel and come out with uncle Ivan and look strong and say, Shatoa Ta and <laughs> my and God, it. help us, Jimmy, help us. <laughs> Damn it, just an introduction, but yeah. still, Midnight Express mm -hmm. and Big Bubba yep. is going to be here with uh, Jim Cornette taking on George South and the Italian Stallion. And I think we're going to finish up with uh, a very quick little new breed cameo. I know you love them. Yep. Uh, guys, the best way to follow our show is uh, on YouTube, in my opinion. We want you to hit the like and subscribe button on your RSS because, hey, why not? Yeah. But if you're watching along with us over on YouTube, you get to see some of Tony's silly expressions and some of the silly graphics that, uh, stupid ass Silva provides the easiest way to find us on YouTube is WHW on youtube.com. That's WHW on youtube.com. I want you to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn those notifications on. You can follow the show at WHW Monday on Twitter and Facebook. And we're on, uh, Instagram at WHW podcast. Tony Schiavone would be glad to block you on Twitter or Instagram. He is at Tony Schiavone 24. Uh, I am at, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad on Twitter. I, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad on Instagram. Actually it's, I, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, but either way, this has been fun. I greatly appreciate the uh, opportunity to take a look back at 1987 and Jim Crockett promotions with you because we had such a blast last year. At least I did covering all of 1986. But we've bounced around a little bit this year, and I think it's been fun. I, I like that we're going to get to see some Nitro from 97 because, man, that's just like chicken soup for the souls. Good stuff. Yeah, it's... Uh... Thanks for that, Tony. Uh, <laughs> next week, we'll be talking about that, that very special Bret Hart debut. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. And then Starcade 96 is on deck. Oh, right wow. Christmas. That's going to be a fun show. Wow, yeah. In Municipal Auditorium, it's can't, uh, wait. can't wait. Hollywood Hogan losing to Roddy Piper by oh, sleeper. Wow, no spoilers. Uh, but Starcade '96, man, that's when you knew, hey, man, this is a whole new world. You know, yeah. the Starcade '95 was was what it was, but right '96 is unbelievable. Ultimo Dragon, Dean Malenko, Akira Hokutu, Medusa, Jushin Liger, Rey Mysterio. Here, here's the new breed, your favorite. <laughs> finished with them look into the eyes of the new breed and tell me if i'm wrong we are going to take them and finish them off one by one the big utopian big blubber the two zandorian night beast the midnight express and that squid jim cornet the new breed is sick and tired of staying in limbo. We're coming out of limbo, and we're going to take the NWA by storm, by hook or by crook. And we don't care about anybody or anything that stands in our way. Tell us, Sean. It's only, like it's merely a matter, a small matter of time before the new breed steps inside the ring, takes care of the Midnight Express and those United States tag team titles once and for all as brother said we are fed up to hear with jim Cornette's mouth i'm gonna do the world a big favor and invent a mouthpiece that will close jim Cornette's trash forever a nice sized muzzle to shut that big fat mouth and the bunkhouse stampedes when the new breed makes their way to the ring in a bunkhouse stampede the people of the world can only dream of how we're going to look when we walk out to the ring. What do you think 
in your wildest dreams, the new breed is going to be dressed in, baby. It's going to be something like you've never seen before. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next week. All the very best. Of course, as we know, uh, new breed, not long for this world. Um, but this would be one of the last times that we get to see them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not going to be long before, uh, that's, that's kind of all she wrote. I think they're going to do a, a shot, um, or two, and then they, they wrap up, man. And they're, they're out of here. Yeah. Because of the car wreck. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of ended their thing. Well, listen, we hope that, uh, you're going to enjoy us ending some things here because we'll reach the end of the show, but I want to remind everybody Starcade 96 on deck. What an impe what an impeccable show that is. That's two weeks from now. We'll talk about Brett's debut one week from now, and then we'll close out the month of December with the fallout from Starcade 97, the nitro right after. So lots of fun stuff coming here on WHW in the coming weeks, but Tony right now, it looks like it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen, it was such a great program uh, for Jim Ross and David Krog, and I'm Tony Shawnee. Let's bring uh, Lex Luger out one more time for a promo. Lex, come on out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Lex Luger. Okay. Lex, what about Ric Flair? Okay. Well, it was better than the last promo. Now, wasn't it? We're just really out of time. We'll see you next week on What Happened When. We come to you each and every week on the cumulus but mondays we come to you only on patron patreon.com forward slash whw monday and of course ad free shows.com <laughs>